Welcome to Seattle Public Utilities Ask Evelyn Live, where we answer your questions about recycling, compost, garbage, and other trashy topics. I'm your host, Becca Fong, and this week, green bin for the win. So we're talking all about compost this month. So we're, all, we're gonna talk about composting your carryout. We get a ton of questions about this. And this month, we're focusing really intently on that green cart. So, as always, Pat's here to join in the trash talk and fun. Log in. Hey, hey Pat. How, you do? how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm all super right. excited that we're talking about compost all month long. It is like sunny outside. Things are growing. It's just the perfect time to really focus on the green card. It is definitely time to focus on spring and nature and growth and compost. We love compost. Yes. Come coming in and going out. Absolutely. So with growth, decomposition has to happen first, right? Right, right. And so this week's question is right in alignment with that. So do you want to get us kicked off? You bet. Let's jump right in. Cool. The question comes into the Ask Evelyn inbox. It says, hi, Evelyn. How can I make sure what I get from my takeout food order is compostable? Last time, I got a big white square plastic container, a fork, and a spoon, and a little sauce cup with a lid on it. Isn't all of this takeout packaging supposed to be compostable? And that question comes from Mario. Great. Well, um, Mario, quick answer, Becca. So quick answer, Mario, is that unless it says the word compostable clearly on it, and even for those small things like the portion cups and the utensils, it has to say compostable on the item in order. Exactly. Bam, right there. Compost. Right. Um, in order for it to be accepted in the green bin. But of course, it's a little more nuanced, which is probably why you wrote us this question. And honestly, Mario, we get this all the it's time. True. So we are happy to talk about it. Yeah. So Pat, let's get into the details. So great. Yeah, technically, you know, back in the day, there was a, a food, food service requirements went into yeah. effect. The first part of that was the foam ban where we banned EPS foam, uh, aka styrofoam packaging from food service. And so you don't see that in Seattle. If you do, you know, shoot us a note to the green business program and we'll, we'll go out and chat with them. But uh, <laughs> the point is, that was phase one. Phase two was the requirement that all packaging be either recyclable or compostable. So the definition of compostable is really dependent upon where you're serving the food. Okay. Uh, it's all single use packaging. So this is what the law applies to. So in Mario's example, it sounds like the, the restaurant is compliant with the exception of one little thing. But the point is they can use rigid plastic to go containers because once it's right. in your hands as a consumer, as a you know, patron to the restaurant, it's, it's your clamshell now and you go home <laughs> and it's up to you to empty, clean and dry to recycle right. that plastic container. Uh, the same would go for a fold top box that has oh, a plastic sure. lining. Um, some of the fold top boxes are brown craft paper colored, you know, like a, like a grocery bag, like natural brown paper, but the lining might be shiny. And if right. it doesn't have the word compostable displayed on the bottom of the box, then it's not compostable. It's just a shiny coated, you know, brown paper box. Totally. Like I have this example of this, you know, hot cup, right? Yes. So it's shiny on the inside, right? So it's got some kind of plastic liner. But what's different about this one is that like what we were talking about, the quick answer is that this one says compostable on it, right? Yeah. So if you, if you encounter a cup that's just like this, you know, with a, some kind of plastic liner for hot right. beverages, you have no way of knowing as a consumer without this word, if it's compostable or, you know, if it's compostable or not. So what's nice is that all of these paper cups and paper to go containers, whether they say compostable or not, if they're empty, clean and dry, they're recyclable. Like that one. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure. so that's a recyclable cup. And because it's a compostable derived liner, it's probably a cornstarch, probably PLA, which is a, a term for polylactic acid. It's a, it's a monomer, it's a, it's a way of combining little molecules to seal up the interior of the cup. It's like a plastic coating, yep. but it's plant-based um, yes. kind of molecules. So technically, you know, I, don't, I mean, I'm not even like gonna get into the whole technical stuff because I, I don't <laughs> like to go there. I like to right. keep it simple, keep it simple, right? right. So totally. keep it simple, see the word compostable, you know you're good to put it in your food and yard waste cart. Yeah. Totally. And we definitely asked, I think Mario, from your question too, is that on the small things, it's like, does it really say yeah. compostable on them? And even portion cups, right, Pat? Like they will be stamped with the word compostable yeah. even on those little sauce cups, right? That's right. Yes, they will. 
Sometimes it's a paper fiber cup, and so it's going to be a very hard to tell embossed, you know, imprint. Okay. But if it's the clear, the clear ones, uh, if they say compostable, then those are also made from a plant-based cornstarch polymer. So there's, you know, you just have to look closely at the labeling, and then you'll know whether it can grow in the compostable cart or not. So right. Like I was thinking with utensils, right? So ah, I put nice. the color on there so you can see it because sometimes it's hard to see, right? Oh, sure. It's like a white fork. It's got small white writing, but it'll say yes. compostable right on here. On the other side, it's got, um, this is what can be really misleading. And we've talked about this on previous right. shows, is that I think that's probably impossible for you all to see, but take Can't our word it. for it. There is like a little leaf and a little set of circular arrows mm -hmm. on it. So even with that sign, that really doesn't mean anything to you. Right. We use this sign, this symbol, for right. our bins and our collection system, just as a as a helpful guide, you know, the little right. symbols, you know, as a quick look. Oh yeah, okay. Once you know it, then you know that's the compost signal. But you know, for a manufacturer to put that on the container, there's nothing that really right. prohibits them from putting that on there, even if it's not compostable. However, they cannot use the word compostable unless it is truly compostable, meaning an ASTM, you know, lab level standard. So that's the word you really want to look for: compostable. Totally. So we've got a question here. It says, are paper egg cartons compostable? I thought someone once shared the paper fibers are not as beneficial being recycled, but may be composted, even though it does, it does say compostable on the packaging. Yeah. So paper yeah. egg cartons, Pat. Yeah. Hey, uncoated paper fiber like that, totally compostable. Especially like myself, when I crack an egg up and I'll put the shell back in, in the box, okay. not like back in the fridge, but just until I get to my compost. Bin. <laughs> so it'll get a little bit of egg stuff on there, you know, a little oak yolk in the snap. But so it is a um, soiled container and it's definitely compostable, but it is recyclable. I mean, there there is a, a limit to the fiber length and, right. and you, you speak to this often about the, the quality of the fiber the coming through the, the recycling fiber. center. Yeah. Yeah. For so. sure. And actually, that brings me to the point. We talk a lot about the three things that we take in the cart, right? Food waste, right. yard waste, and? Approved compostable packaging. And what I always what I think Mario's question brings up is that why do we take the approved compostable packaging? A lot of folks will write into us about, you know, hey, I have this, you know, 100% cellulose towel. It That's says so question. on there. Yeah. And, you know, realistically, those aren't, an, you, you do this better than I do, Pat. It's not an okay. additive to the system, right? Like the reason we take it is to get the food waste, correct? So there's, there's two, there's two um, fronts to this battle. If you okay. Will. One is, you know, to get the food, you want to make it easy on the consumer. So if it's in a compostable okay. container and they didn't finish their meal, they just want to drop and walk, right? They just want to yeah. boom and go. So we really want to make it easy for the consumer. If it's a compostable container, then... They can just put the food waste and the compost container in the green bin and they're good. Oh, yeah. And the other point is though, these are single use packaging items. Meaning if we can make our single use packaging from plant-based materials rather than petroleum based materials, instead of plastic fiber, for example, or corn, then that's a regenerative circular model. Whereas mm -hmm. the petroleum one, that's not, you know, that's, yeah. that's not what we're, we're I, you know, focusing on. But we, of course, focus on plastics as fully recyclable. Paper fiber is a you yeah. know, harvested, you know, resource. So it's, it's regenerative as well. So we're really, we're trying to look for the highest and best option in the packaging. Right. So. Absolutely. And actually, that makes me think uh, next week, we're going to have Kate Kurtz, for those of you who are longtime watchers of Ask Evelyn. She is really our soil scientist and compost expert. So it's always fun to talk to her as well about the process. And we'll dig into that a little bit more for next week. So be sure to tune in about that. So that's great. Yeah, I think that's super helpful. Um, you know, and I think that that answers a lot of questions. You know, we've gotten questions about compostable toothbrushes, mm -hmm. diapers, yeah. all of these other things that aren't really a value adds to the composting process. Well, the reason why the city of Seattle stepped into this space at all with food service businesses is to get to the food. There's still right. so much food in our garbage. Whenever we do our garbage waste audits and we go through and we weigh all the material and try and, you know, kind of identify within the garbage container, within the garbage stream citywide um, through sampling, how much material is in there. Usually 30 to 35 percent is still organic and food waste material. So we really have that challenge, that ongoing challenge. So as much as we can encourage restaurants to use compostable packaging, the easier it will be for consumers when they take their, you know, to-go items, oh, right. delivered or leftovers or whatever. If it's in a compostable container and you're done with that food, you don't want any more of it, it's so much easier to just place the whole container in the compost cart. 
Absolutely. So, you know, we're going to be talking about compost all week, right? Or all month. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I could talk well, we talk all, all week day. as well. We talk every know, day. Right? You know. we'll, just, we'll just keep going. <laughs> um, but there is so much to this process and that's what's really great. So Mario, thank you for your question yeah. because it really helps us kind of answer practical information, but also dig into the process a little bit more that I know from hearing from all of you guys who watch our show that that's really what you're into. So it's also a good quick reminder uh, that this show is run on your questions. So keep them coming. Send them yeah. to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you can send us an email at askevelyn at seattle.gov. So I've got a quick reminders, a couple of quick reminders for you. Speaking of compost, we have our spring compost giveaway events starting uh, this Saturday. We are going to do our first giveaway at the South Seattle Community College in West Seattle from 9 to noon. And we're going to be doing another one in the North End, which you and I were talking about this. It is actually, we're in partnership with Temple Beth Am, which right. is in the Maple Leaf neighborhood adjacent yes. to Doll Playfield. And right. it's crap. So okay. I've given you lots of landmarks. Uh, you don't need to remember all of that. All that information is on our page for our Beyond the Cart events, which is, uh, we'll put a link to our show notes, but it's seattle.gov slash utility slash beyond the cart. Great. And, and one more event I want to highlight too is our collection oh. event. We have one coming up on May 21st, and that's going to be in partnership with Finney Ridge Neighborhood Association. So lots of harder to recycle items, household goods, appliances, electronics, paper for shredding, bring all those down, batteries, bulbs, right. and we will take those for free. So. Those are great events. Thank you so much to all of our partners out there to help, help out with those events. And go get yourself some compost, people. Free yes. compost. Exactly. Check it out. Totally. So thank you guys all for tuning in. And remember, send those questions our way. And we will see you next week. And with that, I'm Becca Fong. And life's simpler with less stuff. And I'm Pat Kaufman. Remember to recycle right. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.